as I pay attention to all of the news, possibly too much, um, I'm just constantly reminded of the fact that only a spiritual vision of life can take us through the issues that humanity faces at this point in history. What I've spoken of is how when we don't take the spiritual into account, when we try to solve things at a level of ego consciousness, whether we're in the right or wrong in terms of the basic facts of what we're fighting for, it's like we're struggling through this, this collective mud and muck that's built up over time and just completely blocks us from seeing beyond the violence, the pain, the fear, the distrust that is literally slowly degrading our chance as a race to move forward into the next stage of our evolution. And this muck of past injury and um, um, systemic oppression and identities, human identities, which are too shallow and too um, simplistic and don't take the true um, spiritual nature into account, it blocks us from from solving the issues. It, it completely blocks us. It's, it's this tangle, I like to call it a Gordian knot of tangled issues and injuries that we simply can't get through at this point, like some great briar patch that we're fighting through to try to get to the place we want to be. And we're not getting there. And we're not getting there because we are still um, working at the same level of consciousness by which these problems were created. So whether or not we're on the, the quote-unquote right side or not, um, we're unable to, to untangle this, this mess. And thus, the uh, need for a spiritual perspective is that we can move above and beyond um, the understandings and the, and the relationships which we're, we're in right now, that we're caught in, that are not able to solve the issues of our time. And we do. We do have to wake up to a higher level of consciousness and move beyond the kinds of identities and worldviews and belief structures and relationships that we have, have created, that now exist. So it's not enough to fight for justice anymore. It's not enough to seek to right systemic wrongs and op oppressions. And it's not enough because we're still working to create a better world of the kind of world and of the kind of human identity which has brought us to this point. So we can create a better world hypothetically. In our minds we may envision what is actually a better world, a world without some people being systemically oppressed, a world without extreme poverty, a world uh, without the ugly, oppressive reality of sexism that prevents women all over the world from being free and equal in, in at least their social roles. You know, we can fight for these things which are good things, but if we, where we succeed, and, and we do succeed, and it does help alleviate some level of suffering and pain, but where we succeed, we still have the same kind of, of human identity, kind of consciousness, and kind of world that we live in now. We are not transforming the world. We are not. And this is why we see with all of the evolution of uh, society, global society, with the um, 
the sense of justice and rightness, of equality, of uh, minority rights, of women's rights, of gay rights, um, of acceptance for people, um, and a need to um, alter power dynamics in order that everyone can be free and share in this world, even with that struggle going on and creating um, and succeeding to some degree, um, and I'm not saying those successes are meaningless, but even with those successes, we still see our world potentially heading for absolute disaster. That There is that potential, and we cannot deny that that potential exists, that with the continuing existence and even proliferation of nuclear weapons with uh, uh, increasingly um, able, in a horrible way, the increasingly able means of uh, terrorist groups to uh, destroy life, with the um, uh, sort of re-emerging rivalry between certain nations, um, and with the continuing imbalance of power, our world is still potentially facing uh, absolute catastrophe, whether that be due to our own technological powers or environmental destruction or some other unforeseen natural catastrophe. We are facing our own extinction. We are still facing our own extinction, and we're not able, we are simply not able, at the, this level of consciousness, to do what it takes to transcend and unify in the way that would allow a, a transformation of humanity. And this is what it will take. Um, you can look at any of the problems that exist, and you can incrementally step forward looking at specific, very specific issues. And again, I'm not saying this is bad or it doesn't have its place, because this does have its place in terms of the fight for justice and, and freedom and these things. But this is not the answer to the overall problem of hu human consciousness and evolution. So you can, you know, take those incremental steps addressing something like population issues or environmental issues or poverty issues, disease, terrorism, oppression, racism, sexism, homophobia, whatever it might be, and it's um, helping to s slow the potential for catastrophe when we do fight for what's right at this um, level of consciousness. But those in incremental steps cannot lift us above the tangle of pain and fear and hate and illusion and unconsciousness. That really is what continues to give rise to the violence and pain and fear and uh, opposition, opposition with one another. And so, ultimately, we do have to awaken to our deeper nature and to understand ourselves and reality in a spiritual way. That is the only true answer. It's the only thing that can actually truly end the threat that we as a race will destroy ourselves. Um, and if we can do that, the kind of unity that would be possible when we awaken to our souls, when we come to identify ourselves spiritually, truly know ourselves as spiritual beings, know what that means, know what kind of relationship that creates, and the fulfillment that comes from that relationship, when this occurs, then these problems will dissipate and fade away beneath us, falling away beneath us, instead of us fighting through endless tangles of issues, those issues will fall away and fade beneath us as we unify, based upon a truly spiritual identity. Any issue you can think of will be entirely solved, absolutely solved, 
by humanity's awakening to our true spiritual nature and coming into relationship with each other based upon this new soul identity. Whether it's population or environmental issues or oppression or war or whatever it might be, poverty, disease, our ability through spiritual awakening to unify in a new way, to relate as equals, to include everyone in the structures and systems and cultures that we create, will end these issues, will end these as problems for humanity. Our world, unified, will be able to hold a population beyond what we have now, far beyond what we have now. Our world, unified, will absolutely ensure that no one lives in poverty and that everyone has the freedom to choose the life they desire and the basic means to do so. Our world unified will see diversity always as a strength rather than a weakness. True diversity, which includes thought which we might feel is more ignorant or bigoted or whatever it might be, that we will allow each other the journey, the personal journey to awakening based upon an essential knowledge that we are all spiritual beings and in our spiritual identity we are equal and we are enough alike that we can understand who the other is whether white or black, man, woman, gay, straight or other, from this culture or that culture, that even though we accept the broad spectrum of color which is each human being in their depths, we will also understand that soul identity which allows us to know the other truly and be in true relationship. And that awakening will solve every issue we now struggle with and it is the only thing that will solve every issue we now struggle with and as much as I admire those who fight for justice that fight for a better world when I see that they do so without seeking inner knowledge and an understanding of their own deepest self I see that though they do slow the potential for destruction, they cannot succeed in any final sense. They cannot lift humanity beyond these struggles. Because these struggles stem from a level of consciousness in which ego still holds sway over who we think we are. And when ego holds sway over our identity, then whatever we are fighting for, we do so with fear and with pain, with a tragic sense of loss, with desperation often, with great anger, which is perfectly natural. But these, these human experiences, as beautiful as they can be when they are directed in the right way, when they are still wrapped around or held by ego, they do not have that ability for transcendence which we now need, which we require in order to free humanity. As beautiful as the human experience is, even where it is held within ego, even where ego holds sway, it is still beautiful and poignant, and yet it does not offer the transcendence that is needed, and only when we, as a race, as a human race, choose to luck within ourselves and challenge our own ego first, challenge the fear and the hatred and the desperation which comes from the ego, and the ego's thought that this world is all that is the ego sense that it must be free and get what is rightfully its own, that it must have justice now, it has to 
or else everything is tragic. It's true that we all deserve justice. But if we are held in that ego's desperate sense that we must succeed, we must have life here in this world, then we are blinded by our fear and our desperation. I cannot be at peace if I think that I must gain all experience and all fulfillment here in this world. Until I look within myself outward into the deeper existence and see an infinity and an eternity that is there for me and for all of us, I cannot be at peace. And if I am not at peace with existence, then I cannot succeed in creating a truly free world. We must look within. We must struggle from a spiritual perspective. Then we can lift humanity to a new level of consciousness and unity which will finally take us past and through these issues to an entirely new experience of being.